Yeah, hi team. Welcome to Cloud Pandit in this Azure Data Factory Master Program video series. In today's session, this is the 28th session. In this session, now uh, this is a handsome. You will see how to delete files from the blog folder based on the time range using the 10 steps. Okay. So generally, this is in real time or uh, the scenarios like you want to delete the log files which are older than 30 days, the log files which are older than 10 days, right? So you want to uh, maybe delete the files uh, which are older than um, 20 days. So will be different uh, scenarios will be there. So in this particular lab, we will see, let's see if I want to delete the files which are older than uh, maybe older than five minutes, meaning let's say the current time is three o'clock. I want to delete the files which are loaded before 2.55. I want to delete the files which are loaded before 255 i want to uh, delete it clear so that's how we will implement the pipeline let's quickly see the lab so the this is completed step by step so the prerequisite for this hands-on if you see i need a one storage account called blob storage and i need one azure data factory and that i'll use azure integration on time one link service i'll create for this blob storage and one data set i'll create for this blob storage then i'll be using activity called delete activity and i'll create a pipeline called injection or basically pipeline for deleting this particular files okay so hands-on steps if you see first i'll create a source blob then i'll create adf then inside source blob i'll upload the files right so then from the Azure Data Factory, right? I'll open the Azure Data Factory. I'll create a linked service data sets. Then I'll add the pipeline. In that, I'll be using a delete activity and I'll configure the timestamp. So what files I want to delete between what range uh, of the time you want to delete the files. So then finally, uh, like once you refer the data set, you can set those times and finally you can run the pipeline. That is the final step. So let's start with the first two steps. I need to create a one source blob and the one ADF. Let me go here and create the one Azure Data Factory and one Azure Data Factory and what else? One blob storage. Okay. Let's click on the storage accounts. Click create storage account. So create a new resource group cloud pundit iPhone dev iPhone RJ. Click OK. Cloud pundit. Okay. Blob 2308 today. Or uh, date I'm giving. So with this name also somebody has taken. Okay. Cloud pundit. Maybe you can say uh, SFTP blob. Okay. So SFTP blob, just click review. So we can just uh, consider as a storage account as SFTP and we can load the files as well. Okay. So this is the storage account we created. The second step is we need the Azure Data Factory. Okay. Let's log in into the Azure Data Factory. Okay, it just opened right now. Click on data factory, click on create data factory. Just use the same subscription uh, and the same research group. And this is the data factory name v2 2308. Click review to create. So, running the final validation and then click create. So, I just create the, the two steps that I need source blob and uh, ADF. Now I'll go inside the source blob. I'll create the uh, cust container and upload some files. Okay, let's go to the blob. Let's go to blob. Okay, so I'll be going inside the containers. Okay, so then I'll go inside the container. I want basically you can say cust is the container. So inside this cust container, I want to delete the files, right? So I am just uploading some two files. Let's upload. So maybe you can say cloud one day type one set from Kamu. You can say here quest two, quest to three. Okay. Some two files I'm just uploading. Let them upload here. So these two files are uploaded at 129. Okay. Now come to the next. What are the next step? We need to open ADF, create linked service data set, and add the pipeline and the uh, add the uh, delete activity and uh, use this particular data set. Let's do 
all these steps quickly come to data factory go to data factory we'll launch studio so we can see right that the data factory is open go to manage tab let's click on linked service click new linked service so the linked service we need to create is for the blob storage let's click on this you can say ls4 blob come down subscription is this storage account name is this is a storage account okay click test connection create it so this is a linked service for blob i just created and the connection is also successfully created let's come to the other tab let's create a data set new data set for the blob storage this is a blob and this is a csv file anything you can take ds for blob and this is the linked service and just browse it and select the custom container and just don't select any of the file okay just select the container only just create the container so just to select the container because i want to select all the files based on the particular time and whatever files are fall into that particular condition those files i want to delete okay the data set also created now let's add the pipeline so in the pipeline so you can say okay pl4 you can say cleanup so this is a pipeline for cleanup so this is basically a delete activity you can just bring the delete activity so come to the source you can use this uh, source data set okay you can use the wildcard file path why you are using wildcard file path because i want to delete all the files all the files means are we really deleting all the files no here you can say let's say i want to delete the files which are older than 30 days means you can just say here add dynamic content and you can use functions like add days will be there okay so add days so what you can do here you can just generate a utc now and you can give minus 30 so what happens 30 days it will remove from the current date so the files which are fall under 30 days back everything will be deleted if you are generating this particular thing at the end time so but in our lab what we are trying to do is i am trying to delete the files let's say now again i am uploading the files okay so this time i am uploading a file called credit salary credit one both okay credit salary and credit one okay you can have any data so that's why i'm not showing the data because data is not important for us at this time any data you can have so now if you see these files came at 132 and these files came at 129 so i want the files which are arrived before 1 30 before 1 o'clock 30 minutes whatever files are arrived into this particular blob i want to delete them so very simple to delete come here and end it max date is here i am going to put it a add dynamic content and i will convert i am going to keep it here i am going to keep it here the i i am going to keep it here ist time so ist time is what 2023 zero eight twenty three so thirteen okay thirteen means so one o'clock thirty minutes so before this time whatever files are came and this is the india standard time so i am giving this time india standard time that you can convert into utc because this particular option expects in the utc now what happens the files which came the files which came before 130 only will be deleted so how i have shown you before 30 days if you want to delete add days minus 30 you can add to delete the files which are older than 30 days here i am saying the files which are came before 130 before 130 means the files which came at 129 128 yesterday day before yesterday all the files i am deleting okay let's give this next logging settings what files are deleted all those things we can able to log it this session i'll explain to you tomorrow this one okay let's click debug now what happens so the files which satisfy this particular last modified end time condition all those files will be deleted from the same storage if you see in the live you can able to see the files are going to be deleted the files are going to be deleted see the files are deleted now the files are deleted correct 
which files are deleted the files which came at 129 got deleted now let's say i am just saying upload again some other files now i am just uploading maybe data quality file okay so i'll wait for some time i'll wait for some time and i'll give some time range let's say there is a process went wrong so i like my uh, support team confirmed that there is a failure at the uh, sync side or the adf pipeline got failed and it has loaded some data so they asked me to delete the files which are loaded uh, today meaning there is a time range i need to set right so today at one o'clock process happened maybe the files are loaded from one o'clock to two o'clock in between whatever files are loaded into these folders those we need to remove because we are going to restart our process there are very rare cases because as a adf developer you need to handle all these things in your pipeline itself but in case there are some cases where we miss it in those cases sometimes we need to again do it manually instead of going and deleting manually we can create a simple pipeline in such cases also to delete such uh, type of files where the files which are loaded between uh, last one hour maybe let's say one o'clock to two o'clock something like that so there is a time range so that's why what i'll do if you see here uh, this file is came at 130 this file came at 135 so now what i'm going to do is i'll say the files which came between 133 to 136 okay now i'll be uploading a one more file what happens is just to wait until 137 so now if you see the time is 137 now i'll be just uploading one more file let's imagine credit weekly okay so this is basically a credit uh, credit folder okay so i should see only credit data but there is a something called data quality.csv because there is a wrong process happened between the 134 to 136 134 to 136 the process which happened before 130 the process which happened after 136 is fine but the process which happened before 136 the process which happened after 134 is there is a problem i want to delete the files which came in between okay so in that case come here you need to set the time range start time and end time here you can just click here end time is max we are expecting 136 okay the same dynamic content you take put it here but you need to change between the 134 to the files which came between 134 to 136 in between whatever files loaded into this folder i want to delete debug this now you will see successfully we will be able to delete all the files okay it is succeeded right now if you come here and refresh this so data quality dot uh, csv file got deleted because that is something unexpected file is loaded into the folder maybe you have hundreds of folders you can't go and delete it so you need to iterate through those hundred folders using the for each you can pass that particular folder dynamically to this delete activity and you can delete it okay so that's all team thank you for watching this particular session let's quickly go through the summary uh, questions what is the purpose of last modified start time option is basically it specify the minimum modified timestamp of a data to be included in the delete for example 134 we have here minimum time is 134 after 134 mini mini minimum 134 means after 134 whatever changes came those things we need to take the minimum time is 134 so the answer b is correct for the mag last modified end time it indicates it's based for the maximum modified timestamp so it is exactly opposite answer a is correct so the third question when using the uh, last modified start time end time option in azure data effect to delete activity what is the purpose of defining a time range to control the size of deleted data to determine time zone of the deleted data, to ensure data to ensure that only data modified within the specified time range is deleted yes so within that particular 134 to 136 within that time range only the data is deleted deleted just to say that we have the start time and end time option d is correct so how can the last modified start time and end time options be used for data deletion in the Azure Data Factory? It is basically by excluding the data modified outside the specified time range, we will be using this because before 134, I don't want to do anything. After 136, I don't want to do anything. Just to exclude those things also, we can able to use these particular two options. 
Next. Which data sources things are compatible with the last modified start time or last modified end time option in Azure Data Factory? All the any source things supported by the Azure Data Factory. So option C is correct. Okay. That's all team. Thanks for watching this particular session. I request all of you to subscribe my YouTube channel and uh, support me to do more videos. Thank you. That's all for today.